What's up, folks? I want to start by giving away the knife, the knife that I covered in my Victorian Ox Mass Drop video. I said 100 likes on the video. You guys crushed it out of the park. I went ahead and did a little comment randomizer to pick one of you that commented, is subscribed, and liked the video to win this, this, this knife. And huge congratulations to the winner of the knife. I'll be in contact with you getting this knife to you shortly. Congratulations. Thanks everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing. Always love hearing from you guys. If you're new to this series, you're new to this channel, welcome. This is a series we're doing all about knife sharpening. So it's segmenting into gear stuff, technique stuff. We're talking about all the stuff that goes into making sure your tools stay sharp. This is a gear episode, and everything that I talk about is gonna be linked down low in the description in my kit page on kit.com. You guys are from all over the world on this channel, so I like to make sure that you guys can get access to every single thing that I talk about. Just a heads up though, disclaimer, if you don't wanna go through any of that, go ahead and check out corin.com. That was a, at least where all the gear that I got was from when I was in culinary school. That was my go-to place, amazing knife shop in New York City to get not just my knives, but all my sharpening stones and even advice on how to sharpen. I apologize if this video is a little bit short. A lot of this gear is just rocks. I wish I could list off a ton of different features for you. And a lot of this stuff has traveled with me over the years. I invested in all this equipment maybe about eight years ago, back when I started off in the culinary field. And you might say $80 for a stone, that's kind of a lot. But when you break it down, eight years for $80, that's $10 a year for sharp AF knives. To me, that's worth it. So I'm using a set of to a pair of Mizuyama stones, the 1,000, 6,000, and then the 3,000. That completes my set for 80% of my sharpening work. I would like to explore the natural stone side of things in the future, but for me, I try to prioritize making the sharpening process less of a chore and more of a minimal setup where I can travel with it. I do have one other stone. This is a 300 grit diamond stone, but this is for more heavy edge maintenance or when I get a new knife, I'll put my own edge on it. And that's for a future video in the technique series for you guys. For me, that pair of stones is the perfect setup. Some people get super crazy about slowly escalating stones. They'll have a 400, an 800, a 1200, a 2000, a 3000, a 5000, an 8000, and then going as high as like 12,000, 16,000 on their stones, which to me is just bonkers. I'm personally confident that if your technique is good, your angles are right, and you're applying pressure in the right way, I can get a longer lasting, probably just a sharp knife with just those two to three stones. And I'm actually 300% more likely to actually sharpen my knives when I know that it's just three steps instead of making it feel like such a chore. And speaking of chore, this is a labor of love. This is not for everybody because not only do you have to take care of your knives, but the process process of taking care of your knives requires you to take care of the stones themselves. And this is definitely going to dissuade a lot of you. A lot of you maybe don't want to put in the work. You want to go take it to a sharpener yourself. And I totally understand that. But I'm a firm believer that this kind of mentality carries into the rest of your work if you're willing to take care of your knives like this. So let's get into some tips for these stones, shall we? The 3000 grit stone, do not soak this one. Corn has it on their website. You should not soak this stone. I didn't read it and I soaked this one. I had to get a new one because it cracked, it swelled and it cracked under the pressure, which was a little unfortunate, but it's something that I definitely learned. Just get some water on it, wait a little bit, put a little bit more water on it. And after like the first or second knife, this should be ready to go for you. It's the same principle I apply to this one just because I know the 6,000 grit side is so prone to cracking. I will just saturate this side wait for a little bit, saturate it again, wait for it to soak in. And by the second or so knife, this is ready to go. And that's just because when I do sharpen my knives, I normally lay out between five and 10 knives to sharpen. I do it all at once, all at the same time. Tip number two, make sure your stones are flat. I use this low, super low grit stone. I think this is like a 400 or 200 grit stone. I do have one linked up on my kit page that is a stone fixer. This one works just fine. Super easy, you just rub it up against the stone that needs to get fixed and make sure all the marks go away so it all looks exactly the same color. That means your stones are flat. And this is so important because I sharpened knives years ago with this guy and his stone looked like a skateboard ramp. It was just completely dug out from all the sharpening that he did. He never corrected it with one of these bad boys. And for those of you 90s kids that have played Tony Hawk Pro Skater, you know that if you point your character straight down at a skateboard ramp, you're gonna face plant. I think I can make it because I fucking suck at this game, yeah? 
And with knife sharpening technique being all about the angles, you need that flat plane of reference to make sure that you're doing it right. Okay, so my stones are ready. They're super flat. They're saturated with water, ready to go. I use this bad boy. It is a metal and rubber stand for my knives. It is adjustable via these screws back here. This helps it elevate it up off of the counter so I get that knuckle clearance as I'm going back and forth on the knives. Honestly, not that big of a deal. I just wanted to feel hashtag pro status with my knife sharpening. If you get a stone that's flat, like this 300 grit one, it is definitely a plus to get that up off the counter feeling, but most of my stones are thick enough so that I don't have to have this. It's just nice to have. If you don't happen to pick one of those up, just put a towel underneath your thicker stone. Should work fine for you. The thing that I do like about this though is the fact that it is adjustable. So instead of having an entire set of stands to custom fit each stone, this is just perfect because I, if it's a shorter stone, I just adjust it and back and forth, keeping it a little bit minimal on this setup. Also, another piece of kit that I didn't show you guys, it's not gonna be linked up in my kit page. I didn't show it in my Victorinox knife sharpening montage is this, and this is something that I make for myself every single time that I move. I had one in Norway, I had one in Napa, and now I have one that I moved to Seattle. So this is just two pieces of wood sandwiched together with a few screws in the middle, and then I drill holes in it to allow water to leak through. This goes in the sink, and it is sandwiched by both walls of the sink here. I take my little knight's knife stand and put it on top of it, and then I turn the water on in a very either slow drip or a thin stream. And I use that water to kind of saturate the stones as I go. And I personally prefer to sharpen, especially on longer sessions with this, just because I'm not swimming in water and mud. It's, it's less motions because you don't have to pick up a, either a bottle or a sprayer to saturate your stones. You just have the water constantly running or dripping for you. And for me, it just makes the whole process cleaner, safer, and faster. And again, unfortunately, I can't affiliate that link for you guys because, well, I don't know what your sink looks like. So there are definitely a few touch-up pieces that I use after the entire sharpening process is over, but that's gonna be another video where I talk a little bit more about maintenance and finishing. But what I showed in this video is like 80 to 90% of what you need for a pretty awesome starter sharpening setup. If you do end up checking out the links in the description and leveling up your setup, you can look forward to the next video, which is gonna be technique focused. We're actually gonna sharpen a knife. It's not gonna be from zero. We're gonna take your knife that's semi-sharp to like, holy sh sharp. I've also got videos planned for either a chipped or busted knife with no edge to take it from zero to hero back to its former glory. Again, we're early in this series, so if you guys have questions you wanna know about any of the gear, any of the knives, any of the techniques, leave them down in the comments. I seriously read every single one of your comments. I would love to answer any questions, so I invite you down into the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next video. My name's Justin Kana. Have a good 